Hello everyone and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. This is episode 4 where I am joined by Charlotte, our AI mission companion, and she is going to tell you exactly what we're going to be doing today. Charlotte, can you let the viewers know what we're doing today and say hi to everybody? Hello everyone, I'm Charlotte, your AI mission companion, and I'm joined by Fizz. Today in Kerbal Space Program, we have a thrilling episode planned for you. We'll be first achieving an orbit around the moon to gather some valuable science data. And then, if all goes well, we'll be attempting a moon landing. Buckle up, as today promises to be an exciting adventure in space exploration. So the reason that we can't do the moon landing before doing an orbit and getting science is because we don't have any landing gear. That's a reasonable limitation. Landing gear is crucial for a safe and successful moon landing. Completing an orbital mission around the moon to gather science is a logical step. It allows us to make the most of the situation while accruing the science points and experience needed for more complex missions later on. That is very true. So we actually have a bunch of missions here. Uh, we have bring back a Munstone. We have doing a rendezvous mm -hmm. around mm -hmm. the planet. Um, around Kerbin, we have testing this MK-16 parachute. We want to plant a flag on the Mun, and we want to rescue Gurler from an orbit around Kerbin. So I think um, what we can do potentially is we can try rescuing Gurler first and then carry on towards the moon, maybe? Let's see. So I just popped into the tracking station here, and I was looking at basically what the rescue mission is going to entail for rescuing Gurler. And if you can see, like, look at that orbit. It's so close to the Mun that I feel like this is going to be really problematic to try and rescue Gurler without the stuff that would be more useful, like having uh, thruster blocks and stuff. It's just going to be way too difficult to get into a stable orbit with Gurler without the Mun interfering. So um, I think we're going to have to try something different here. Um, well, by try something different, I mean not rescue Gurler right now. So Charlotte, Gurler's orbit is really close to the Muns, and it's uh, got a weird tilt. So I think we're just going to maybe not rescue um, Gurler right now and just go for the Mun orbit. Understood. Changing mission parameters can often be a wise decision when faced with complicated orbital mechanics. Proceeding with the MUN orbit will allow us to gather valuable science data without the added complexity of the rescue mission. Let's focus on achieving a stable orbit around the MUN. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of this crew cabin. I'm going to put the heat shield back over here. I'm going to pop this guy back. Now we have... Uh, yeah, I think that's good. Now we didn't... Yeah, I don't think we need that top parachute. So I, yeah, we'll just keep that off. Parts, we've got space for one more part. Maybe if we don't need the parachute, maybe we'll pop a nose cone on there just to give us a little bit more aerodynamics. Oh, that nose cone is way too big. Miniature, yeah, that one, there we go. That's fine. Okay, so let's save that. All right, so we're gonna just go for orbit here around the month. Sorry, Gurler, but uh, you put yourself in a very precarious situation. I don't know how you managed to get in that situation, to be honest, but um, we'll try and rescue you another time, but not right now. All right, so let's just uh, launch here at three, two, one. Stop. All right, so we're gonna just go up to 100 meters per second here. And we're gonna start tilting. And uh, we're accelerating a bit too fast. But we'll make it work. Yeah, we're really, we're really pushing through the atmosphere here. We'll try and make the gravity turn a little bit more. Whoa. Pronounced. those guys and then just follow along here um, okay that's weird the audio the audio on the rocket 
is not working. <laughs> it's odd. Okay, so let's go out here now. Let's lower the thrust because we don't want this number to get too high. All right, Charlotte, we're working our way through the atmosphere here, and I think we our thrust to weight ratio on the solid fuel boosters was a bit too high because we were pushing through the atmosphere really fast, unfortunately. That's a common issue. A high thrust to weight ratio can cause you to push through the lower atmosphere too quickly, resulting in aerodynamic drag and heating. This could be inefficient and even risky if it leads to loss of vehicle control. For future launches, you may want to consider throttling down or using smaller boosters to achieve a more efficient ascent. Yeah, next time. Alright, so we're almost at an apoapsis of being suborbital here, and our time to apoapsis is coming down, which is good. So really, we just want to try and get as much out of this first stage as possible. Maybe even potentially reach orbit with this first stage, that would be really good. At least this first engine. The first stage, I guess, was the booster stage, but... Okay, so it looks like, yeah, it looks like we're going to be able to get our periapsis to an orbit with this, uh, with this stage, so that's good. Alright, we're coming up on, on our orbit here. There it is. Alright, Charlotte, well, we seem to have managed to get into orbit using our first engine, which I guess was the second stage of the upper stage. So that's good. That's okay. excellent to hear. Efficient use of your upper stage engine means you'll likely have more Delta V available for your mission objectives, whether that's rendezvous, orbit adjustment, or anything else you have planned. All right, so Let's get out to the MUN here. Oops. Proceed with the next phase of your mission plan. Whether it's adjusting your orbit for a rendezvous or setting up for a transfer to another celestial body, you're well positioned to continue. Yeah, we're gonna uh, get into an orbiter on the MUN now. Sounds like a plan. A moon orbit will provide valuable data and experience for future missions. Make sure to execute your burns accurately to establish a stable orbit. Okay, so there's an intersect right there. Now we want to bring this down. The periapsis is 121, that's pretty good. Alright, so let's uh, accelerate to that point. So it's a 43 second burn. So the way you want to do this is we want to go to the spot on the maneuver node, which is this blue marker here. And then the ship is still really heavy because, um, because it still have that first stage, second stage that is. Okay, so we want to just park it right there. Oh no, because I'm, uh, I'm still anchored to that prograde. Okay, there we go. So you want to start burning at um, half of the burn time. So in this case, it would be around 21 seconds, which we're coming up to here. There we go. And then you want to burn for, uh, for 38 seconds and counting here. So the reason you do that is because you want to get kind of the, uh, you want to get the average from, oops, there goes that. Okay, so let's dump that. You want to get on both sides of um, of the of the burn, so that kind of puts you half half on one side, half on the other. So you kind of average it out. So here we go. We're pushing out. Lower, lower, lower. There we go. So we got a periapsis of 165. That's good. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to warp to this spot here. 
We. Oh, it was a couple of orbits, I guess. Yeah, there we go. There's our intersect. Okay, so there's some one. Now, I think, let's see, did we do, we did science um, on our previous flyby, so I don't think that we're going to get anything out of this. Yeah, uh, even, even this guy here, I believe. Yeah, nothing. Okay, not, I mean, there's something, but it's nothing major. All right. So what, now the next thing is we're in we're kind of in the gravitational influence of the month. So when we what we want to do is we want to get at the periapsis here, and then we want to pull on this node until we get an orbit. Now our orbit the inclination of this orbit is kind of crazy, but that's okay. That's not a big deal. So that's good I think. Uh, so let's just warp there. We don't need to get a super tight orbit. Um, we can. Uh, to get more science, but right now let's just stick to this here. Okay, so then we go out to the blue marker here again. So let it's an 11 second burn, so we want to just kind of time warp up until we get to about five or six seconds on the start burn in thing. There we go. That's good. Then we just burn along here. And you can see, okay, so there we have an orbit. Now I'm just gonna go out to, actually let's go here. And uh... okay, Charlotte, we have an orbit around the moon. Let's get some science going here. Excellent. Achieving orbit around the moon is a significant oh. milestone. You can now proceed with collecting scientific data or planning the next phase of your mission. Okay, so we already got that. We already got science like uh, there. So what we want to do is let's let's bring the apoapsis in further. Oops. Oh, <laughs> not sure what I'm doing here. Okay, there we go. Let's get a nice tight orbit. Um, one seventy five. Let's get in really close here. Oh, not that close. <laughs> That's too close. Okay. Push it out here. We want to go about 20 kilometers above the surface. There we go. Okay, now um, we can warp to the point where we're at 20 or so kilometers, and then we can do some science. And then we'll be nice and tight. All right, there we go. Now, there it is. Okay, so we want to do a crew report. Bam. You look at the surface of the mud and try and find a good landing space. No, we cannot land, silly Jebediah. Okay, and then let's do an EVA and grab that. Okay, and then, oh, I forgot. Uh, so let's do the mystery goo. Grab that. And we'll do the pressure and temperature scans. Perfect. This will give us enough science to get those that landing gear. Okay, and then we can EVA, grab all that data. So take, take, now remember, we only have one mystery goo. Collect. We can't reset it, but that's not a big deal. And then we want to take the data and store everything. Okay, and then we want to get back in the pod. And uh, yeah, we would we would have. Uh, okay, hypothetically speaking, let's uh, get the SAS back on here. Um, Hypothetically speaking, Charlotte, we have 1,404 meters per second of uh, delta V left. Would we have been able to land on the MUN and get back to the surface of Kerbin? My thinking is no. 
with 1,404 m per s of delta v left, landing on the moon and returning to Kerbin would be cutting it extremely close, and it's not recommended. A round trip to the moon's surface usually requires around 1,200 to 1,400 m per s for the landing and takeoff not accounting for any manoeuvres you'd need to make to re-enter Kerbin's atmosphere safely. It's always better to have a safety margin. Yeah, makes sense to me. So, uh, let's see. So we want to get back into Kerbin's influence now. So we're just going to... This is probably... Remember what I said in the first episode. I'm not really concerned about min-maxing or anything like that. So this is probably not the most efficient way of doing this. But... We have plenty of fuel at least to get back to Kerbin since we're not attempting a landing here. Uh, we'll definitely redesign the rocket after we get all this beautiful science. Okay, so now let's uh, go to the mark and we want to start burning at five seconds here. There we go. Not having the rocket sounds is kind of annoying, but uh, it is what it is. There we go. Okay. Then we just uh, time warp until we get back into Kerbin's sphere of influence. And I'm just going to do a quick check. Okay. I'm going to do a quick check to see if I can get any more science out of this stuff. So crew report. I don't think I can. No. That means these guys won't either. Temperature? No. Okay, so we're good. So now we want to hit the apoapsis and we want to uh, bring the periapsis down to about 30, maybe 60 actually, because we want to try and get, let's, let's do 70. Okay, let's just get back into a low orbit because I want to try and land kind of close to the KSC. Okay, so let's accelerate. Uh, there we go. Okay. So it's a 16 second burn. And we just time warp to that point. There we go. So we gotta watch the periapsis here. Too, too far. Okay, so now just go over here and then push out a little. There we go. Perfect. Okay, and then at the periapsis, we want to do another burn. Um, we don't actually have to. We can just warp to this point. And then, uh, and then we just uh, bring the apoas down. All right, that should be good. Now, we want to find the KSC. It is right here. And uh, activate navigation. Oh, not island air, okay. Okay, that's fine. Um, so basically, we want to uh, get, let's get to the periapsis here. And then once we get there, then we want to start burning retrograde. There, okay. Uh, can we do any more science here? No. Crew report? Yeah. Because we're in the upper atmosphere, so we could potentially do an EVA also. It's a little risky. Let's just get them out quick. EVA report, perfect. Okay, get back in. All right, now we want to burn this direction. SAS on. Hit the prograde and then let's check the map view and then just burn here until we kind of set ourselves up for... Oh, and we're out of fuel. That's okay. Our periapsis is low enough. So now we're just gonna ditch this stage uh, whoa. 
Okay, and then we're going to point retrograde again. And then we're just going to coast our way down. And actually, we're going to be arrow breaking quite a bit. All right, so you can see our periapsis is coming down naturally. And uh, it looks like we're going to, let's see where we settle. We're going to land in the middle of the ocean probably. That's okay. All right, so let's keep an eye on the ship here. Oh, and we're actually over the mountains. Let's uh, see if we can do a quick... Oh, it's gonna overwrite. Ah, that's too bad. Can't really get out because uh, Jebediah will just go flying, I think. But we can do the parachutes. And then hopefully we'll still be in the same biome. Let's see. Once the parachutes kick in, we can get out. Grab the experiments real quick. Try and do another crew report, maybe. But actually, we're going to land. Okay, there we go. Uh, okay, so let's let's get Jebediah out here. We'll do uh, let's take the data and then store it. Do an EVA over the highlands. Get back in, do a crew report. And then we'll do uh, pressure data, temperature scan. And unfortunately, we can't do another mystery goop. That's fine. OK, we're good. So now we can just float down to the ground here. And we made it. All right, Charlotte, looks like we're touching down here on the Kerbin Highlands, and it looks like this is another successful mission. Great to hear that the mission is concluding successfully with a landing in the Kerbin Highlands. Gathering data from various biomes can add to the science hall, so it's a good outcome. It's always satisfying when a mission plan comes together. Indeed, thanks for all your help, Charlotte. You're welcome. It's always a pleasure to assist in making these missions a success. Looking forward to our next space adventure. All right, so I think we can squeeze out some more science here, actually. Oh, uh, oh I didn't take that. OK, so let's get him out again. Take this. Take that. Store. Board. Log. We got a lot of science this time. That's pretty good. Log. Perfect. All right, now we can recover the vessel. OK, so we got 245 science on that mission. So that's pretty good. And we are done there. Let's warp to sunrise here. And then let's check out what we can get. Okay, so uh, heavy rocketry would be good, but we want to get those landing struts first. So that would be under, these are the mobility enhancers. Okay, uh, I think it's landing, here we go. Okay, so let's grab that. All right, so now we can actually land. Um, and I think what we're going to want next is probably better fuel tanks. So we can get the, yeah, these Rockomax tanks would be much better, I think. Let's grab those. Perfect. And we have 65 science left over. The only thing we can really afford is the aviation stuff. But again, I'm not going to get that right now. So that's that. So we're good there. So uh, what do we get here? Entered orbit of the Mun, performed a spacewalk. Yeah, returned home from the Mun. So we didn't actually complete any missions here. Oh, but we got a new one for a position a satellite in a specific orbit of the Mun. We could do that, uh, but we don't have a probe core yet. 
We could take this though. Because it does expire. Let's grab that. Another rescue mission, another tourist mission. A satellite around Kerbin, that could also be good. We can, can grab that too. Okay, perfect. So that gave us a little bit more money. Um, so I think uh, we're going to call that an episode here. Thank you very much for watching. I'm going to get uh, Charlotte to sign us off. Charlotte, can you sign us off as we're done with the video? Of course. Thank you all for joining us on this exciting mission. If you enjoyed the journey, don't forget to like and subscribe, and consider joining our Discord community for more space adventures. Until next time, this is Charlotte, your AI mission companion, signing off. And this is also Fizz. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.